Number nine then from this new higher specimen paper. Number one, equations of lines. This first part though, AB is a line parallel to this one that goes through this point. Find the equation of that line for just one mark. Now in fact there is a quick way of doing that. I'll set it out the way that you'll probably go through because it's the routine you're used to. And that would be, first of all let's rearrange this into that well-known phrase or saying, whoops, y equals mx plus c, so that you can extract the gradient being the coefficient of x. So you get m equals negative 3. That means that in the line AB, the gradient is also negative 3. AB, the gradient of AB will be equal to that. And obviously it's going through the point, negative 1, 10. So you can put it into the equation y minus b equals mx minus a. You don't actually need to write that part out. So you've got y minus the 10 is negative 3 times x minus the negative 1. And you probably know you can just leave it like that and you'll get your mark. It's only one mark. There's still quite a lot written down there. But if I tidy that up, what have I got? I've got y minus 10 equals negative 3x, and that'll be with these three negatives, minus 3. So y is negative 3x. Take the 10 across as a plus 10, plus 7. But you can just leave it here, though. That was quite a lot, though, for one mark. Now, there is a much quicker way, which you may not be aware of, which is this. These two terms, the y term and the x term, determine the gradient of the line. Every line that's got y plus 3x equals something, equals some number, will be a line parallel to themselves. So if you want the particular line with this slope that goes through these points, just find what number all these points should come to by putting those numbers in. So y is 10, x is negative 1, 10 and negative 3 comes to 7, which means the line you're looking for, the line AB, is the line y plus 3x equals 7. It really is as simple as that to find parallel lines. Now what's part B? Here's another line. 3y equals x plus 11 is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Notice AB isn't an infinite line, it's got two terminal points on it determine the coordinates of B. You knew the coordinates of A. Well, what would this line segment, I should call it, look like? Well, notice it's got a negative gradient, so this line is going down quite steeply. And what did it have? At this point, the point was negative 1, 10. That was the point A. If that's the point B, now this line, notice, Perpendicular, take the 3 across and divide, it's got a gradient of a third, is the perpendicular bisector. It cuts it at right angles and it cuts it in the middle, so let's call that point M. A little sketch helps here. And the problem is, how can you find the coordinates of B? Well, you know the equation of these two lines, so you can find this midpoint by substituting the equations. Now that's why I want to get this into this form in the first place anyway. So you're always as well going for y equals. So I've got two equations, so I'll simply substitute. To find m, I'll substitute 1 in 2. So what does number 2 say here? It says 3 times y, well y is this, y is negative 3x plus 7, should equal x plus 11. Multiply the brackets, negative 9x plus 21. It's x plus 11. It's all a bit backwards, so I'll switch them this way, but read it backwards. Plus 9 makes that a 10x over on this side. Take away the 11 makes it a 10, so over on that side, which means that x equals 1. And then putting that into number 1 means that y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 7. Negative 3 and 7 is 4. So m is the point... Or is it? 1, 4. Now that you know M is the point 1, 4, you've got two ways of finding B. Simplest of them is just to use the displacement. Whatever the move it takes to get from A to M, it'll be the same move to get from M to B. So I could just state it that way. I could say the move from M to B is the same as the move from A to M, and you could just state it by looking at the moves. Negative 1 to 1 is a 2. Zero, 10 to 4 is a negative 6. So that means you go 2 along, 6 down. 
So how do you get to B? Two along, six down. So I'll just state it this way. If I start at one, I go two along. And if I start at four, I go six down. So B is the point three, negative two. That's using displacements, stepping out, as they call it. Now, there is another way. Since that's the midpoint, you could use that midpoint formula to find it, but you'd be using it in reverse, of course, so solving equations, simply by saying this. Well, how do you get the midpoint? Which turns out to be 1, 4, of course. What does it you do to get the midpoint? Well, what you do is you add the x-coordinates, so that's negative 1, I don't know what this is, so I'll just call it x just now and half it. And you add the y-coordinates, so that's 10, I don't know what this is just now, and half it. And that gives you two equations, because this should come to 1 and that should come to 4. Still quite a bit of work. So you've got x minus 1 over 2 makes 1. So x minus 1 multiplying makes 2, so x equals 3. That's one part of it. Another equation. I'll just write it as y plus 10. y plus 10 over 2 should make 4. So y plus 10, taking the 2 across, should make 8. So take the 10 across and subtract, so y is negative 2. So you could use the midpoint formula in reverse to form two equations. I think the simplest way is just to use displacements.